ChartKick is an easy way to add charts to your application. Whether you need simple line charts, pie charts, or bar charts, ChartKick will be able to add these into your application fairly unobtrusively. ChartKick supports three different types of libraries out of the box. The first is ChartJS. It is a MIT open source library. And with this library, there's eight different types of charts to visualize your data. Another library supported by ChartKick is HighCharts. HighCharts is a beautiful charting library, however it is not free, so if you are going to use this in a SaaS application, you do need a license. However, for non-commercial usage, you are able to use this. So be sure to check the license to make sure that you're within its guidelines. And the third charting library supported by ChartKick is Google Charts. They do have a nice little library of charts available, as well as some additional community contributed charts. So to get started, we'll add gem chart kick to our gem file. Be sure to run bundle and restart your Rails application. And then in your application JS file, you'll need to add required chart kick. And you'll also need to, above this line, add in the different charting library that you will use. So if you're going to use the default chart JS, then you can simply add in chart.bundle as another required line. However, if you are going to use high charts, then you will need to download and add to your vendor file under the JavaScripts directory, the high charts. Now I'll put in a link in the show notes on how to obtain that file. And if you're going to use Google Charts, you still need to require chart kick in your JS file. However, in your application layouts, you'll just add in this include tag for the Google JS API. So first I'm going to create a pie chart and the pie chart will just simply look something like this, where you have pie underscore chart, and then you need to pass in an array of the data. So if we want to keep track of the different votes for people who like basketball or football, then we can pass in the arrays for those items. So if we go into any of the show pages for our products, we can then see our pie chart. And as you hover over different sections, you'll get a little popover with details for that section. And we can also create a line chart, which is simple as typing line chart, and then open your parentheses, and then we can pass in a hash of our data. So here we have our hash, and if we set 20 days ago to 5, 10 days ago to 10, and then if we just have a time stamp and set that to 7, going back to our application, if we refresh our page, you'll now see our line chart appears. So this application is fairly simple where a product has many purchases, and a purchase belongs to a product. The purchase model has a few different attributes, one being the product ID, the purchase price, and then the purchase on date. So we can create another line chart, and with this line chart, we're going to call our product, and with the product, we want to get all of the purchases, and we want to group the purchases on the purchase on date, and then we want to sum by the purchase price. So refreshing our page again, we now see the data from our database with the information pulled up for this product. If we go back to our home screen, we can check out some of the other products like the Sleek Iron Watch, and then we can see its data as well. You can hover over each one of these values to see the total price sold for each particular day. And within your config initializers, you can create a initializer file for some global default options for chart kick. For example, if you want to make the colors different for each line, then you can't. So for the first series, we would use a dark red, and for the second series, we would use a pink color. And so far, we've not created any JavaScript code to get our charts to be displayed. It's all been Ruby helpers within our views. So how can we interact with our chart on the client side? So I'm not going to get into it too deep into this episode. However, let's say you had an action cable WebSocket that would then subscribe a user so their chart could receive updates from a published event. So in order to do that, we would need to be able to tap into one of our charts via JavaScript. You might have something like this within our TurboLinks load here. You first need to define your chart. So we'll set a var chart and we'll set this equal to using a helper from ChartKick. We can then call charts then we would have to pass in some sort of ID. So in this case, I'm just going to pass in the ID purchase, and then we can type get chart object. And by doing this, we then have a JavaScript object linked to that chart. So coming back into our show page, we have to then give this chart an ID, and that's as simple as just passing in an ID and then calling this purchase. 
And then for this example, I'm just going to set an interval that's going to occur every one second. And within this looping interval, we're just going to get a random index. So for each one of the data points, we're just going to get a different random index point, And we're going to call this index to update. And then we're going to get the first series data set. And then we're going to get the point from our index to update. And then we'll just create a random number from 0 to 100. And once we have this done, we then have to call chart.update. So going back to our application, if we refresh the page, you'll then see some data points automatically changing. So this is how we can communicate with our chart on the client side, even though the chart was rendered on the Ruby server side. Now you'll see when these data points are changing, it's a instant change. We're not getting a graceful movement of the points. And that's because of the chart kicks default options. So in order to fix this, we would need to pass in some options to our chart that's being generated. So for our line chart that we have created, we need to pass in another option called library and then pass in animation, easing, ease out quad. Go back to your application and then refresh the page and then you'll see that it's nicely animating. And I have found that ChartKick and all these different charting libraries are really fast. So they're able to take a lot of data and update the charts fairly quickly. So here I'll change our interval to make a random change every one millisecond. Going back to the application and refreshing, you can see the chart just going crazy wild. It's really kind of cool, but it's just a proof of concept of how you're going to be able to use Action Cable to then push data to a client side chart that was rendered from the server side. And we can also change our line chart to something like a column chart or even a bar chart to get different type of charts. And it uses the same syntax for passing in the data as well as setting the different options. So going back to our application and refreshing, you'll now see a column chart. And then there's what a bar chart looks like. And be sure to read the documentation on ChartKick because there's a lot of options that we haven't covered. Also, be sure to read up on the different options for the library that you're using for your charts. One example of a feature that we didn't cover was the Say Goodbye to Timeouts. And this is just creating a URL that you're passing into your line chart data that's going to then call an action and controller within your application to then render out the data. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, Check out driftinruby.com.